Catherine Coleman, The Power of God. And my wonderful Jesus, I pray that not one person shall see Catherine Coleman, not one. Not one in this place of worship today. Whether they're here in the main auditorium or whether they're watching through closed circuit. Not one. Not only here in the service today, but throughout the world. Catherine Coleman died years ago. Died to the flesh. Died to self. That Jesus might be lifted up. I pray that not one person throughout the world at any time shall ever get their eyes on thy servant. We are here to lift up Jesus. And may he give great glory unto himself. Now open our understanding to the deep truths of the world, for there's nothing more important than your word. Open our understanding standing to the world today. And may we understand the personality of the Holy Spirit better than we ever had before. For Jesus' sake we ask it. Amen. I shall speak only very briefly today. I say that and I make up my mind it's going to be so brief and then suddenly I find out that, that, it, that the briefness is so don't hold me to any time whatever you do. And uh, I've learned a long time ago that you can always trust the Holy Spirit. And you can never use the Holy Spirit. But it's a beautiful experience when the Holy Spirit uses the vessel. And that's what I want him to do today. And just the very minute, be assured, the very minute that I feel the Holy Spirit is ready to pour out of himself upon the healing of sick bodies. We stop immediately for all that secret of following the Spirit. I'm going to be very practical in that which I do have to say this afternoon because I think that we need some good practical teaching in this all important hour. And we are living in the church's greatest hour, and I say that without fear of contradiction. I pray to God that every minister of the gospel, the pastor of the church, every priest, every rabbi shall catch the glorious vision of the hour in which we are living. This is, without fear of contradiction, the church's greatest hour. I wish I could stand on the highest mountain top. I wish I could give you the facts regarding the word of God. And remember something, remember, I say this word to you. I make this statement on the authority of God's word. This word needs no defense. Know that. I'm not here defending the word of God because the word of God needs no defense. We're living in the closing moments of this dispensation. This is the hour when literally he's pouring out the spirit upon all flesh. That's the why of all of these miracles. That's the why of the great manifestation. That which is happening here in the services. That which is happening here in America is happening around the world. One of the greatest thrills of my life was several months ago when we had that great miracle service in Congress Hall in Jerusalem. And the Lord tarries, we're going back again next year. It's one of the greatest experiences of my life. I always wanted to do it because I, I, I knew that after the rapture of the church, I wouldn't have the, the privilege. Because I don't expect to be here after the rapture. <laughs> you can stay here if you want to, but I'm going to be gone. I want you to know something. When the Holy Spirit leaves, I'm going. 
I'm not going to hang around. I'm not going to hang around you. Do you want to know the only thing that's holding the whole thing together is still the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit in the Word? But when the Holy Spirit goes, when the church goes, don't look for me. I'm not going to be hanging around here. And I wanted the privilege of just holding one great miracle service where it all began with the coming of the Holy Spirit in Jerusalem. And that's where it's all going to end, too, you know. Oh, this is exciting in Congress Hall. And I know that many, many of you people have been in Jerusalem. You've seen Congress Hall. But you've been in Congress Hall packed to capacity. The thousands and, you know, that balcony all around, that great auditorium, packed to capacity. They locked the doors, and then auditoriums around were filled, and then the great overflow on the outside. Hungry for God, 37 nations represented in just that one service. 30, that's what's happening today, is what I'm telling you. It's an exciting hour. It almost looked like a United Nations meeting, because... Uh, I was speaking in English, and uh, they had little booths set up where the interpreters were talking to those in their own language and headphones all over the place. And the delegation there from uh, from uh, France of Catholic sisters, all in beautiful habits. Thirty-seven nations, thirty-seven different languages, and I was speaking in the American language. They were sitting there. God was speaking of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. We wept together. We laughed together. We were blessed in the Spirit. I still contend that the Holy Spirit speaks a universal language. I believe that. And then suddenly, when the power of God began to fall, and the power of the Holy Spirit began to sweep that great audience. And remember, there were Catholic priests there from all over the world. There were heads of the Greek Orthodox Church there. Men in the clerical robes. They were there, men in high authority of all denominations. Protestant leaders. There we were, members of the clergy, with our differences when it came to theology. But when the power of the Holy Ghost began falling in that place, we forgot our little differences. <laughs> We forgot the mode of baptism. We forgot our little petty differences in, the not, in, in, in doctrinal truth. We forgot them. And at one time when the power of God was falling, I saw them prostrate all over the floor. <laughs> At one time, they told me there were 200 prostrate under the power of the Holy Ghost. What was it? In the last days, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. That could not have happened 25 years ago. That could not have happened 15 years ago. That did not happen 10 years ago. That, my friend, is happening today. This powerless coming out, this glorious coming out, this wonderful coming out. Catholicism is experienced. A great 
great outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Our Protestant churches are experiencing a great outpouring of the Holy Ghost. A great coming out. Thousands of men and women are receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I want to go on record as saying there's no one in the whole world, no one ever stands behind the sacred desk who believes more in the baptism of the Holy Spirit than the one who's speaking to you just now. I believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I believe in the fruits of the Spirit. I believe in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I'll go so far as to say that I believe that there are more than just the gifts of the Spirit that are mentioned in the Word of God. For He giveth the Spirit Spirit, the Holy Spirit, without measure. There's more. There's so much more than most of us fully realize. I see something. I see something. And yet I don't have the ability. I'm so limited. and try to express what I see, what I know in the Spirit. No one in this great auditorium is any more hungry for more of the Spirit than the one who's standing before you just now. Every atom of my being is crying out for more. I can't die. I've never known a craving for food for my body. And I've been mighty hungry sometimes in my life. I've never known such a craving for food for my body. I've never known such a craving for water to parch my lips as I hunger and crave more of the things of the Spirit. You and I have only tapped the surface, that's all. Just the surface. After every miracle service, but I've seen the wonderful manifestation of his power, and I've stood awed, knowing that I have had nothing to do with that which has happened. I've had no part in that service whatsoever. I stood there almost like a spectator, and I've watched the movie of the Holy Spirit. And I go away. Feel like a little child. It's the best way I can express it. Standing on the seashore. Picking up a little pebble here. With my little bucket and shovel. A little shovel of sand there. And then when I look up, I see that vast ocean before me. That vast ocean. And there's more. Oh, God, give us some fish. Sometimes. I think those of us 
who are a part of this great charismatic movement, call it whatever you will. I really don't know whether that's the right word to use or not. I don't know. It's like when I talk about the slain power of God. I don't know what to call it. And so I just call it going under power. I don't know what else to say. Because these are spiritual things. These are spiritual things. And we have to ask God for our ignorance. Because they're beyond man's intelligence and greater than man's vocabulary. But sometimes in the midst of this great outpouring of the Holy Spirit, we get hung up on the ecstasy of it all. We get hung up on the thrill of it all, the ecstasy of it all. That experience is marvelous. And I believe in the speaking in an unknown tongue. I have to believe it because it's in the scripture. But I'm going to tell you something. No man, no woman, no Christian needs how to be taught to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You do not need me to give you instructions how to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And the baptism of the Holy Spirit is something more than just a lot of babbling. Something that's unintelligible. Remember his perfect wisdom, his perfect knowledge. And anything that the Holy Spirit does is absolute perfection. When the Holy Spirit speaks, He speaks in a perfect language. Much that we label the Holy Spirit is not the Holy Spirit at all, it's the flesh. And much of our manifestation, my friend, I'm sorry to say, is the flesh. And in the excitement of this ecstasy, I'm afraid there are those who are being disillusioned. You think you have been filled with the Holy Spirit, received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but my friend, the real test of having been filled with the Holy Ghost is the life that you live after that baptism. Something more than noise. It isn't how loudly one prays. It's what you have in your heart. Sometimes the one who shouts the loud has the least on the inside. They use it as a crutch. Some of the greatest prayers that I've ever prayed in my life, 
some of the greatest answers to prayer that I've ever had in my life. The burden was so heavy, I couldn't speak an audible word. But though it was so great, I just lifted my being up to him. What was said wasn't audible. But it came from here. And he heard the cry in that falling tear. Let's learn how to worship. Let us learn this glorious personality of the Holy Spirit. This many a person who professes the baptism of the Holy Spirit, who know nothing about the person of the Holy Spirit. And I want to say something about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I must say this, because I think that so often among the brethren, those who are in the great movement, and this is all important because this which is happening is happening around the world. It's the great outpouring. And remember, all the forces of hell will not stop it. You can't stop it. Satan himself isn't going to be able to stop it. It's something that's timely. It's something that's scriptural. It's something that's sacred. We talk about the power of the email one. I think we've gotten so negative in our news media. We've gotten so negative about things around us. We've gotten so negative. I think that Watergate has completely turned the whole world into something that's negative. So let us stop thinking negatively. This is our greatest hour. I'm trying to get you to see something. There's more than just the scene in unknown tongue. And then along with it, for so many, there comes a spiritual pride. And all that you can think about, I have all that there is for me because I've received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I've spoke, spoken in an unknown tongue. Beloved. Be careful. The greatest sin, I think, among the Christians is spiritual pride. <laughs> spiritual bigotry. And I've seen among them who've made the greatest profession spiritually, they were as dried up as last year's corn shocks. <laughs> as sons of old. Since the Spirit has departed, they get up and shake themselves. For they wist not that the Spirit hath departed. I want to say this, and I cannot give you any more than I experienced myself. And I'm only sorry I can't give you more. One of these days I may be able to. I'm so hungry for more. I never hold a miracle service, never. But what I receive of fresh baptism, of 
fresh in feeling of the Holy Spirit. It's something that's constant. It's something that's constant. It's something that's constant. That glorious personality of the Holy Spirit. many as are led of the Spirit. It'll cost much, but it's worth the price. I'm going to say to you in the next several minutes, it'll cost much. I weighed the cost a long time ago. It's going to cost the death to self. It's more than just the ecstasy. It's more than just the thrill of a moment. I'm not talking about that. I too know the ecstasy of haven't been baptized with the Holy Spirit. When all of heaven came down and Jesus himself baptized you in the Holy Spirit. It's as though your feet were no longer touching the ground as you walked. You can't sleep Nights, the glory of it all. Oh, the glory of it all. But it was still in an old world. This mortal has not yet put on immortality. That which is corruption has not yet put on incorruption. We have a greater responsibility before men than ever before. For along with these wonderful spiritual experiences, there also goes responsibility. And I want him to trust. He'll never trust you with more until you have proven he can trust you with that which he's already given you. To be led of the Spirit. And when you're led of the Spirit, it means that you follow. know what it means to be led of the Spirit? Do you know what it means to be so dead to self that you no longer have a will of your own? I'm talking to folk who know nothing about that which I'm saying. Nothing. I'm talking to men and women in this place who are part of this great charismatic movement. Who know nothing about what I'm talking about when I talk about two wills becoming as one. 
Please forward the cassette and turn the tape over for the remainder of the service.